Morning folks, welcome back to today's vlog, uh, glad you're here. Um, so race day vlog number two. Hmm. We had already decided last night, because of the cold as you can hear, racing probably wasn't going to happen today. Um, and then we wake up this morning and yeah, I mean look at this, snow. 16th of March and it's snowing so who knows what it would have been like trying to drive down to Lancaster um, It's just not worth it at the end of the day. We're not a professional rider. We've said this many times before We're not a professional rider. We're an amateur racer. We do enjoy it, but we're doing it for fun This is not fun um, It's dangerous so Into the garage we go And we're going to be on Zwift. There we go. Uh, the Kiss at Base Winter Ride. So we're doing two hours, zone two. Uh, there's two groups, uh, a faster group and a slower group. We're going to jump on the faster group today. I think we've got about, about six minutes to go. Um, so really we should get on the bike and uh, start getting warmed up. Let's go on it. I'll see you in Zwift. deciding factor on whether to be outdoors, indoors or not at all. I think for me that snow was the deciding factor. I don't mind the wet especially. It does take a certain amount of motivation to get up and go out in the morning when you know fine well you're going to be coming back soaking wet. It doesn't help when you've got a chesty cough. However, snow, for me, is a no-brainer. I'm not going out there to put myself at risk. In fact, somebody asked me yesterday, do you consider yourself a risk taker? To a degree, yes, I race bikes. Not very seriously. It's still a very, very amateur level. I do it for fun, I do it to keep fit. But yeah, I don't, I don't think, I wouldn't consider myself as a risk taker. So certainly, heading out in the snow, to do a race, and especially a crit race. No, absolutely not. So yeah, drop me your comments. What's your deciding factor? Where do you draw the line? Be interesting to see what the what the views are across all the viewers. Just checking there the S Naven, Kinaven. I wondered if it was Cervais, the famous ex Skyrider, winner of Paris Roubaix, but it wasn't, it was a lady, Senna. I had the pleasure of meeting Cervais back in 2012 when I did the, uh, the cycle slam with Lawrence Delalio, Fred Flintoff. Uh, we were in France on stage five, heading towards London. Cervais joined us. For a couple of days, the day before and the day of, the stage when we rode into Roubaix, did one of the sectors leading into the town, followed the race route, the last couple of kilometres through the town, and then finished up with two laps on the famous velodrome. That was phenomenal. But the thing that struck me when I met him is here's, here's a group of amateur cyclists. I mean, at that point, I'd only just been bitten by the cycling bug again. I hadn't been cycling for years. and. Uh, you know, with it being Lawrence Delalo, you've got a lot of rugby pals who were taking part in the event. So you've got a lot of big, big blokes, fit guys, involved in skiing and rowing and various sports. And then you've got Cervais, retired professional, who's still a whippersnapper and still for fun goes out and does ridiculous amounts of kilometres per week. It's because that's his thing. He's a cyclist. Yeah, so even as an ex-pro, still super, super fit. Very, very lean, very thin. Very, very nice guy to meet. 
And of course, once we got to the velodrome, shower and in the end, those famous stone block showers. Yeah, special day that was. I remember thinking, going into that event, because I knew that we'd be riding on the cobbles, worried about tyre, tyre width and tyre pressure and this, that and the other. And at the end of the day, none of it mattered. We only ended up doing one sector. But that one was, oh, I mean, I live in Edinburgh, streets are full of cobbles, and I thought, ah, I've done cobbles before. <sighs> Nothing prepares you for the cobbles of Ruby. They're rough, they're uneven, the gaps are rutted, they're huge. It's just an absolute bone shaker. Massive kudos to these pros that race on these events. Because even in the gutter, the bouncing around was just teeth chattering. There we go, half an hour to go until the event starts. The three hour Innsbruck ring, flat race, four laps, 35 kilometers, 308 meters of climbing. Very interesting to see how this race goes. My legs are not feeling that great. Which I'm not surprised about, given the state of the body with the cold. Turning here at the bottom, just take us up the mile. May as well just finish off at the start finish line. It takes us roughly 29k. And that gives us just over 20 minutes. By the time we finish, just around about 20 minutes before the race starts. Got the change on to the Tron. We all know that the Tron is still the fastest bike for flattish events. So although it does have the, the leg snapper, there's a lot of flat and obviously downhill sections within that course. So yeah, definitely the uh, best idea is to change on to the Tron. There we go, up to 30, done. Right, stop there. Give me a little menu. There we go, now we can change our bike. We want to change the wheels, we want to change the bike itself. There it is, the Tron. There we go, that'll do. So 30k. That was the uh, that was the event that didn't happen. And then that was me, and then that was just the last bit. <clears throat> Pretty easy. Job's done. Right. Let's see. Quick stop. Go and get some coffee. Be back soon.